Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm gonna do a quick battle plan for Tuesday, December 18th. And I'm gonna do it on Slash GS, which is the S&P 500, and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And I'm gonna start here on Slash GS, and if you've been trading the last few weeks, you're just, you're noticing, right? There's, I don't need to say this. Goes without saying, we're, we're seeing some of the highest volatility we've seen in the last three years. And when you start seeing massive volatility like we're seeing, it is extremely, extremely important to get into these larger time frames because it helps see the cycles better and uh, it kind of helps you kind of see what's going on. When you get so sucked into those smaller time frames, people start freaking out. But when you zoom out and look at the big picture, you can kind of see a, a clear story, right? So it's very clear what's going on. We've had really, really nice vol. I mean, yes, I say nice, but the volatility has just been, um, you know, oversold, overbought, oversold, overbought, and then now we are getting severely uh, oversold. And we're already seeing a little bit of a rally coming off of these lows. Um, we're coming back into this 2018 demand. We literally, like, almost to the exact tick, touch or uh, kissed. Uh, that low so it's like it obviously there's massive amounts of demand down into here and it literally kissed and it rallied right off of it if you go to smaller time frames you'll see and so it's very clear that like nothing ever just continues to tank like this especially going into the end of the year it's very rare uh, I don't want to say rare but there's something called a Santa Claus rally where uh, most more years than not you see a rally going into the end of the year Okay, so there's a lot telling us that we are going to see a little, I'm not saying how big, but I just don't foresee us tanking like we have been because we're severely oversold, massive demand, Santa Claus rally. Like it's very, I mean, we would need some really fundamental uh, news to really rock this market going into the end of the year. And I just, I just don't see it happening. Now, what could happen, and when I, when I do say this, uh, we do have the largest news announcement coming up this Wednesday, which is the federal funds, uh, the Fed funds rate. And they are expected to raise rates. And so I'm not sure if that's priced in. I kind of feel like I think everybody knows that they're going to raise rates. And so I think that's kind of priced in. But if they do raise rates, this could, I mean, um, it could absolutely continue tanking. So Wednesday will be kind of, that won't come out till 2 o'clock Eastern. And so Wednesday will be an up in the up in the air day, front, and then Thursday will be playing. We'll be trading the reaction off of the FOMC. But um, if they don't raise rates, I think that could be very bullish, and we really see a rally, in my opinion, because then I think that could be false sell-off because people thought it was that they're going to raise so they're selling and then they don't right and i think we could see that santa claus rally and santa claus rally is almost kind of a self-fulfilling everybody knows everybody knows what the santa claus rally is and so they all make it rally right it's a self-fulfilling deal so we're severely oversold severely oversold okay we move into that four hour chart we did break uh, October and November's demand, 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 we did break it. But that doesn't mean it's just gonna continue to, to fall. That's not how the market works. All the market does is cycle, right? So what is the next logical progression, right? The next logical progression is to see this at a minimum come back and so notice how 2600 demand, 2600 demand, demand breakout. Now 2600 can act as a target and or resistance. Break through 2600, we got some targets up above. Okay, and so we're gonna have some short-term demand into that. Uh, if we do wanna continue to grind lower, I can look for my higher low buy triggers down there. And uh, so now we move to the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart. And what we're doing here is we're just looking for structure. We're looking for the best places to buy, the best places to sell. We're looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones. And what I always do is I start exactly where price is and then I start planning and visualizing. What am I going to do or not do at every single zone if this chart wants to cycle higher? And then what am I going to do or not do at every single zone if this chart continues to retrace back down into this um, uh, demand zone down here? Okay, so let's first talk about if we continue to cycle. We're already seeing almost a half a percent already in this evening session. Uh, plus 0.5, generally a good place for resistance. Not in this case because we're too severely oversold, uh, but I'm not against looking. 
sorry, yeah, I just got mixed up there. I'm not against looking for a plus 0.5 breakout, hold higher low, and spread up into that zone or traditional futures or at the money binary, right? So ride that four hour candle buy trigger. Remember I talked about 2600 using it as a possible magnet and or resistance. And so for me to even think about selling this chart at a minimum, I need to be in this region right there. So I would need to get up into there, possibly set divergence or even carrot trade at a minimum in there. And then my second zone would be right uh, into there. And honestly, I say second zone, My, I mean, I really don't see resistance until there. And so it's really kind of like first zone, second zone is right there. So I, I mean, right when we start trading in the this, there's really not clear to find structure to the left. The only thing that we would have there is kind of a, actually, I mean, that'd be really close to a plus two. And so we would be really overbought on a 15 or 30 minute chart. So you just got some content, a little bit of context, but all of the structure is right there. So, and again, I, I'm, I'm being a little bit vague because when volatility creeps like, I mean, I have been doing this for four and a half years. Generally, yes, I am spot on. But when volatility picks up like this, it's like, come on, I mean, I'm not God. This is really, really difficult to try and predict this stuff when volatility is so screaming and racing. And so uh, I can really, and so it's another big thing when we have such large, we need to be trading zones because of volatility is so high. So like that's an entire zone of, of, of targets for bulls and possible zones of resistance. And that's, ba and that's almost a, you know, a 10 point zone there where I'd be looking for targets and resistance. And as far as demand, we had to the tick right there on that negative and a half. And then we got that trend line low for possible demand if we want to double tap that and if and and i would want to wait for higher low buy trigger confirm that we're seeing change control and if this if this chart wants to literally seriously just continue to dump below that negative and a half we will be hitting yearly lows yearly lows and there will be no structure below that negative and a half and so uh, i will not be trading down here i'll move on to some forex markets or whatever i always want to be trading where there's structure and because uh, that's what gives me an added edge. Quickly move to slash in Q. It's almost the exact same. Get through plus 0.5, hold higher low. We got targets right there. That would be my first zone of resistance as well. And then second zone of resistance would be into that 6,700. Okay, and as far as demand, higher low buy trigger off of that support, or sorry, that uh, buy triggers demand right there, negative and a half. And then if you start tanking below negative and a half, we don't have any structure there, so I will move on to something else. Slash RTY, really not much to talk about. It's the exact same. Get through, hold higher low, target, and then I can use that for my first resistance zone. And then of course I got that higher low buy trigger, and I will not be trading uh, below that negative and a half because I will go where always I will always go where the structure is So comment if you have any questions take pictures of all of your trades and post them in the group and in the chat room So that you can get feedback from me and from others